Kevin Hart. Here. Ann Simon. Here. Also, Robert Eaton. No. John Zaragoza. No. Robin Ramirez. Kelly Long. Now here. <laughs> Very good. Tom Bocard, I live at 336 Twin Harbor Drive. I have a script here, I'll try and read from it. Should okay. go fairly quickly. And I did leave Carolyn with uh, some copies for you to look at. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna read yeah, right I've got one here too. So um, I'm a relatively new town homeowner. I'm here to speak about the recently completed reserve study, which was commissioned by the site authority. You may not be aware of the study, but I wanted to bring this issue to light because I believe the site authority board needs to weigh in on this issue within the next few months before the budget cycle begins for next year. So let me quickly get to the heart of the matter. I purchased my rental townhome from the site authority a little over a year ago. It was a rental townhome. Um, there are 70 other, 87 other town homeowners who also purchased their home during this conversion process from rental to ownership. Church, shortly after um, the last of the rental townhomes were sold, a reserve study was completed which indicated the reserve shortfall attributable to these 88 rental townhomes um, was approximately 440,000 or about $5,000 per unit. At the time I purchased my home, uh, the site authority did not disclose it was passing this significant obligation on to me. I assume the same is true for all the other 87 townhome owners, townhome owners who purchased their home at the time. Um, the site authority owned these 88 townhomes for many years while the shortfall was accumulating under their stewardship. Um, if, the SA, if the site authority claims they did not know of this issue, it does not matter because as stewards of managing our reserve, it was their responsibility to have that knowledge of the shortfall. So I believe it is not right that the site authority has passed this reserve sh shortfall obligation on to the 88 townhomeowners who purchased their homes. This issue is too late to address for this uh, nearly completed budget cycle process, but um, before re resolution to the reserve study is made in the upcoming months, I think it's critical, critical to understand what the site authority's position is on um, these 88 townhomes, uh, which they had owned for many years and for which this shortfall had accumulated. So I trust that the site authority will engage the community in how to address this issue and I'm confident a fair solution can be found in the months ahead. Thank you. Sandra Bowles. That's me. Uh, I'd like to see the like oh. to Smuggling Cove. I uh, have an issue where on February 14th I reported that 55% of the exterior lighting on my block 
And when I say my block, I mean the 200 block, not my entire street or the neighborhood. The lights were inoperative, and I put in a work order and asked that they be taken care of. That was February 4th. 17 days later, I attended the hack meeting, and without me bringing this issue up, it was announced that Cam had hired a new electrician, and it was stated that he was hired for four hours per month. And knowing maintenance and how things are done, I thought, that isn't adequate. So I questioned the electrical contractor specifically at the meeting, and I said, how many lights do you think you can replace in four hours? And he said, well, depending on the severity, probably four. If it's minor, maybe eight or nine, if it's just a bulb. The next week, the electrician came and he repaired one light only. So that still left us with 11 lights out. In my cluster, there are 11 homes. After he repaired the one, two more lights went out, which basically left us with 64% of the exterior lighting in our neighborhood out. So through this whole process, no more lights were fixed. So I contacted Mike McConnell at facilities and I said, I've always told you before about lights. Is there a work order? Are you going to fix these? He said he'd look into it. <coughs> then I was told he was no longer assigned to us. So what basically happened was it took 51 days to get these lights fixed. So they have been fixed. They have been fixed. 51 days is too long for something like that to happen. We're on the decomposed granite path. We rely on those lights to enter our community. We rely on those lights to startle the coyotes away. So that's just a common point. The second point that I would like to bring up, and I'll make it very brief. I was cited for having flower pots on my property. And this is a big issue I'm sure you're all aware of. The day that I was cited, I hired a student to canvas the, the neighborhood. I'm a town homeowner. I don't completely understand what it's like to be a homeowner, a single family resident. But I know there's 200 townhomes. On the day I was cited, 171 of them had something wrong, quote, based on the letter I received. They either had flower pots or swing sets or something. If 171 homes out of 200 have a violation, there would have been a better way to handle this situation. You would have sent out a detailed letter saying, we're looking to do a community cleanup program. These are examples of what's no longer, you know, it's not allowed. This random sighting, which started with Ms. Darcy in December and is now continuing till May, this is a six month process of individual sightings, individual, I call them attacks, where this could have all been avoided by a pleasant letter, some examples, and a time frame that this needs to be done within a certain amount of time. Not these individual letters where everybody wonders why their pot has to go but their neighbor's car is on blocks. Why this thing has to be removed it's bad for the community, it's bad for our relationships, and it's completely inappropriate. So I would ask you to look into the citation program because if a neighbor has had a pot on her porch for 20 years, or 12 years, I'm sorry, 12 years, and she receives a citation and she doesn't even understand what it's about, or another neighbor of mine he had a number of empty pots in the community space. And I said, you know, I'll buy those from you if you'd like. And he goes, they're not mine to sell you. They were there when I moved in. That's community space. It's not my responsibility. So I've taken enough of my three minutes. I appreciate you listening. But the current activities of waiting 51 days to get a light bulb replaced, I have 11 more examples that won't fit into your three minutes. One quick so, question. I'm not sure. Is, were, was, was it a light bulb that was the problem, or is it a, a malfunction in the actual device itself? I don't know because I didn't speak to the electrician, but he did tell me at the meeting 
back on the 21st of February that sometimes you go and you just replace a light. Sometimes it needs a ballast. Sometimes it may need a sensor. So it could have been any one of those. It could have been any one of those things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Thank you for listening. David? Hi, I'm David Watts. I live on 335 Platts Harbour. I have two things I'd like to mention. One was the la is the landscaping. It was really bad for maybe like about three weeks. We think it's been solved, but I'd like to feel that somebody is on top of it so that we don't have that kind of problem again. I mean, mistakes can happen, but it was pretty bad. The second thing is perhaps more serious, and maybe it's just hearsay. But since I've been here, which is about three years, I've heard from numerous homeowners that the figures relating to our reserve study and our finances are cloudy. Can I say just cloudy for the moment? And, um, and it occurred to me, I know we're not a homeowners association, but what would prevent you from just publishing the, the figures every year like homeowners associations do? And that would clear up any doubt I have spoken to a lot of people, that, um, and maybe a lot is, is five to ten, who really are quite concerned that there's something wrong with the figures. And it would seem to be very easy to do that, and it would make us all feel happier, and we could see that the figures are okay. One quick question. Stephanie, have we published those? We've published um, March and the April financials just now. We've published December as well, uh, this past December, and implemented that this year. So we did this year. Mm -hmm. And we agree with your comment. I think that the more of the, the information we can get out, the better. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yes, and I, I, I think, and I'm sure Stefan is correct, of course, but I haven't seen, cons over a period of years, I haven't seen, no, no. That, that, and, and that's the thing. But, but thank you, for that, that's the comment, yes. We did, we did, we had a lot of homework. Okay, we hear that might be the case, and I hope well, so too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sure hate to think it isn't, because we've been working hard on it. It okay. just takes some time. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Yes. Darcy? Oh, hello, I'm Darcy Wilbur. I live at 204 Smugglers Cove. I came before you in February to ask for three things, or to, to talk about uh, harassment, that was happening, I felt that I was being harassed by my neighbor and that his complaints about me were now being taken up by the management company, Dave Friesen, who was becoming the instrument of harassment. And he cited me twice for pots on both my back patio and my front patio. I went through the entire process he told me I needed to do to apply to have pots there and after I came and spoke to you, because you said it's the site authority that makes those decisions, I received the decision, which was that was totally unallowed. So first, I just want to verify that that's what you as a group had decided after looking into my claims of, and my suggestions that you stop doing the citation. I think. Was that not? Jake with an older gentleman on my front landing. 
Upon seeing me, Jake quickly jumped down. They started walking hurriedly away. I asked him, called out, asked him if he had instructed the landscape maintenance crew to pull out all the wildflowers growing around my house. He answered in the affirmative, yes, he had done that. Most recently on Friday, May 9th, after being gone on business for a week, I came out of my house that morning at 10.30 a.m. only to find Jake with a young woman this time taking pictures of my house. I called out to him again and asked him why he was taking pictures of the front of my house. He told me there was a small birdhouse sitting in the crook of the tree and I needed to remove it to my courtyard. If I had not caught him skulking around this way, I'm sure I would have received another certified letter demanding that I remove the birdhouse or be fined $100. This undue attention being paid to me and my house is really upsetting my right to a quiet enjoyment of my home. I feel uncomfortable, I feel threatened, I feel unfairly targeted, I feel like I'm being harassed. Meanwhile, the relentless herbicide spraying around my home has so far killed three Cianosis replacements and four oak tree seedlings, to name just a few. I really demand that it needs to stop and it needs to stop now. Thank you. Um, time to work them in and get the problem solved for you. But at this point, you know, uh, know that we are trying to work on some of these issues and get the problem solved. Sorry. Can I ask a question? Dan, sure. I don't know if I did accurately. That 171 of 200 homes have been cited. That's not no, they haven't been cited. No. What I stated was on the day I was cited, and I believe I was the first one to be cited, based on the certified letter. I had one of my students survey the neighborhood. There are 200 townhomes, 171 of them had what would be considered, according to the letter I received, a violation. Whether it be children's toys, whether it be pots, I still to this day can't understand why I cannot have a pot of flowers on the walkway to my home when we walk through town center, which is Kennedy Wilson, and they put, I believe, 24 pots along the public walkways, but for us it's a crime. But 171 out of 200 homes on the day I was singled out, and I realize I'm not the only one to get a violation, but we're now in our sixth month of people still getting violations. It's, it's ludicrous, it's just simply ludicrous. I mentor students and also adults and in addition to that if they should need funding for a book or for this or for that I will take care of their expenses so I'm, I'm not sure am I answering your question no, are you a faculty member in campus oh no I'm sorry no 
Uh, when I say students, I generally mean anybody who's attending the school. Oh, I see. Not student as in, this is my not student. A classroom assignment. No, I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. I'm not a professor or a teacher. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a private resident. Thank you. Yeah, I had a couple questions. Uh, yes, sir, uh, when you read the, the notice of violation, did it reference anything particular that you were violating? No, the notice that I received gave two sublease uh, sections of what I had done wrong. And when I looked up one of them, the sublease that I possess appears to be different because one of them related to not paying your taxes on time. So I found it a little confusing. Uh, I was given three <laughs> pictures and I was told that a two pots of roses in my driveway had to go uh, Lowe's had delivered a stack of soil. I was told that that couldn't be in my driveway. Then when it came to the front of the house, I'm in a unique situation. I'm on the side of a mountain and I have a drop off point. The stairs that go to my home are not shared by anybody else. So I didn't realize that was considered community space. And I have a particular instance where there's a landing. You go up two steps, landing for the years. If someone isn't careful or watching, or my, my steps are not properly lighted, you have the ability to fall down six feet to a concrete sidewalk. There's no railings because all of the hedges that had originally been there have died out. There's nothing left but bare dirt and weeds. So if I'm at my front door saying, Ruth, thank you for coming to visit. You know, I really enjoyed seeing you and the person takes a step backwards, they could fall six feet to a cement sidewalk. <coughs> so I had placed pots along that walkway so that people would have a natural barrier to know that they weren't just going to fall off the stairs. Okay, so what I'm getting at is, first of all, if you're gonna get cited on something, I'm sure it's always nice to know what the rules are. And apparently you, you're not aware of what they are because they will not describe you properly. No. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Is the pesticide is that what you referred to? Yeah. And do you know what pesticides you're using that you want to stop them to? Well, for the last nine years, <coughs> Roundup has been, or a derivative of Roundup has been used. The new pesticide is called Pilot. It's doing the same thing, and, and it's just a new formulation. So I don't have the... But, but yes. that, that's what you're referring to. Yes. Roundup it's, and it's, it's killing your... Uh, the Roundup was killing the plants through the entire uh, University of Troy neighborhood for the last several years. I've come before the site authority many years in a row asking for the Roundup to, to stop. And what would you like to be placed with it? What are you recommending? I, I'm recommending that they, that they actually weed whack what is actually truly weed at a certain moment in time when it makes sense to do it. Your process is what we do with new answers. Okay. Okay. Because a lot of these come, we haven't made a selection. Oh, no, I, 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 I don't work in this. Right. I'm not quite sure I understood what the yeah. issue was. Right. right. So my right. issue passing it on. Right. Nine years ago was that these herbicides were being sprayed. They're hazardous to our health and certainly to the health of the environment with no people don't know that everything had just been sprayed so dogs and children were playing in these so, areas. so there's a the her, uh, her, uh, pesticide as an environmental issue yes as well as a random issue so exactly both, like both issues both of them I mean they're connected now the thing about the pots I have what the okay. citation is if you uh, I'm not, I just want okay. to ask about that if you don't mind no okay. Okay. I know I asked another question, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, uh, when we say, uh, referring to the um, reserve amount of $5,000 per door, what is it you had in mind that you, you're proposing, or in your, what you want the taxpayers to pay for their head, or what you want to do? Well, um, there are a couple different ways to approach this issue. One is, um, uh, you can go back to the individual homeowners who purchased homes from the site authority and reimburse them directly, or, the undisclosed 
preserve shortfall that they were handed unknowingly. Um, the other way is to work through some computations and it's easy to do and just deposit a bulk amount representing all 88 townhomes and deposit <coughs> that into the reserve fund balance on behalf of all the homeowners to help us because we have a significant shortfall reserve. It's significant. Uh, Mr. Ford, next meeting perhaps we can have a report on the alternative and how we may approach this issue. That's one question. The other, the other, or we could, the other one is uh, who, uh, who's responsible for the landscaping, the concrete for retaining walls, the electrical work? Uh, is it all subcontracted out? Is there a, a central location where people? that is the responsibility of the site authority. And so when the site authority portion uh, needs repair, um, it is bid out. Um, so they are, they're all contracted associated with it. Is there, is there ever a, a, a situation where the campus sets its priorities for the uh, maintenance and then the housing folks have their priorities? Is, is, is it just one priority that you do for the whole, for both? Uh, so uh, when we established the uh, uh, care for uh, the landscaping on the East Campus, we did a bid. How many uh, staff do we need, uh, supervisors, to take care of the, um, uh, the East Campus? And so that is separate. Um, so when you schedule work, it's separate. things like the landscaping that the homeowner may be putting into place that there needs to be coordination with to make sure they can gain access to that retaining wall, for example. So, um, um, but the repairs with the site authority would make our sort of front on the street facing more safe. If we could get a list of the sidewalks, Thank you. 
Well, well I, I, my name is, sorry, my name is one of your questions. Yes. You know, you know, I didn't see your, I went down the list. Kevin Banners, right? I'm sorry, Kevin. Oh. I didn't follow. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I'm Kevin Banner, 324 Twin Harbor Drive. I'm here to uh, read a prepared statement on behalf of the homeowners. We've come before the Site Authority Board to discuss the widespread dissatisfaction of University Glen homeowners with the Administration of Landscape Services contract. The landscaping is poorly maintained with dead bushes, rampant weeds, and a broken and misadjusted irrigation system. This has resulted in a general deterioration of the common areas. The Site Authority, in exercising its oversight of the common area maintenance fund, contracted with CSUCI Facility Services maintain the landscaping in accordance with the service level agreement. The cost for this service is $51 per single family home and $56 per town home each month. This is well above the fair market value for the contracted services. Despite billing UG CAM above fair market rates, CSUCI facility services has not provided the services stipulated in the service level agreement. Weeds have not been removed, the dead plants have not been removed and replaced, and the irrigation system has not been properly maintained. Facility services did not hire additional staff to satisfy the contract and found itself unable to meet its obligations. <coughs> the site authority has allowed CSUCI facility services to end its contractual relationship at the end of this contract year without requiring the contract and services be provided. We believe that payment of above market rates for facility services while not requiring them to fulfill the service level agreement is an inappropriate transfer of UG CAM funds to the university. We also believe the Site Authority Board acts as a fiduciary in administrating UG CAM common area maintenance. As fiduciaries, the Board is required to act in the interest of the University of Glen homeowners. We believe the Board has not acted in our best interest. On behalf of the 51 homeowners who have signed, we are presenting a petition of the following demands. One, legally cease the siting of homeowners who have in good faith spent time and money to make up for the deficient level of landscape service and start a dialogue with homeowners over what landscape modifications are appropriate. Two, require CSUCI facility services to remove weeds and dead plants, replace missing plantings, mulch remaining bare areas, and correct deficiencies in the irrigation system prior to end of their current contract. Three, refund the portion of the cost of the current landscape contract that is above fair market value. Thank you. 